join us on a sweeping journey across the Indian subcontinent, exploring wildlife regions and species rarely, if ever, seen before on international television. With conservation tracts getting increasingly fragmented in India, human beings and wildlife are on an inevitable collision course. As human beings, we find it more fascinating when a tiger attacks a man riding atop an elephant than a sambar deer in the forest. As so it was the case with the famous tiger attack that took place near the Kaziranga National Park in 2004. A female tigress had strayed away from the safety of the adjacent national park and into village cultivation. Her cubs and she had to be rounded off and taken back to the safety of Kaziranga. Elephants with mahouts atop them were deployed to do a haka and beat the tiger family back to the forest. Instead, the tigress felt threatened and sensed danger to her cubs. After magically hiding in high green fields with two foot high cultivation, she springs forth and lands atop the head of the leading elephant, landing a swipe with her paw on the mahout's hand and taking out one of his fingers. In what is now regarded as the most iconic animal attack video of all time, the famous tiger attack of Kaziranga perfectly illustrates the deadly collision course between the natural world, wild species and humans. In India, it is thus difficult for us to see the natural world in isolation, but as a part of our human lives and living environments. Oftentimes, the natural world and humans have managed to find common ground and live in harmony. To many, it conjures up images of the tiger, perhaps elephant, maybe leopard. But none of those fascinate me quite as much as some of the lesser known species, those scantily recorded, not often photographed, not often given attention to, the less known but as much perhaps more interesting species. This is the collared pygmy owlet. Now the collared pygmy owlet inhabits these middle Himalayan forests of Uttarakhand in the western Himalaya. I'm at 7,500 feet altitude and it has an extensive range from here from the western Himalaya through the eastern Himalaya, Bhutan, Arunachal, all the way through China, Taiwan and even Borneo. So the collared pygmy owlet is a tiny little owl, perhaps the smallest owl in the world. It's just under six inches tall and about 60 grams in weight. And it's one hell of a predator because it can take on prey that's almost its own size and weight, perhaps even a little more. It's fond of lizards, mice, small birds, crickets, locusts. We're seeing daily rainfall here. And the collared pygmy owlet loves this kind of habitat here. Mixed oak, broadleaf, rhododendron, forest. With a scattering of deodar, the Himalayan cedar, and a range of other middle Himalayan trees. Now the collared pygmy owlet here is not active by night as much as it is active by daytime. So it's diurnal and crepuscular. Crepuscular means it's active uh, at sunrise and sunset, so during twilight. This collared pygmy owlet hunts around in these forests for its prey. And this year we actually found a nest of the collared pygmy owlet, which is a very rare occurrence. It was situated about eight feet up from the ground in the hollow of a tun tree. The tun is a local Himalayan tree, Citrella tuna. And it was in a hollow of the tree, which was obviously previously excavated by a barbet or a woodpecker. And uh, the chicks inside were being fed by lizards and mice. And we photographed the food being brought in by the parents. We didn't disturb them. We sat in a hide next to the nest and filmed the food being brought in. The collared pygmy owlet has a wonderful little call. And sits up lonely on a tree often for lengths of time during the day, making its call and the, the sound carries for kilometers. Goes somewhat like this. Beautiful. 
powerful four note call comes from one of the smallest predators one of the smallest owls in the world and every time I, it stops calling I call back to it and it starts over again and it just goes on and on for lengths of time calling out like that across the mountains and it's a wonderful little sound because it, it brings with it a sense of the Himalayan wilderness and the outdoors of the mountains of India and the forests and its remarkable range makes it a truly international species because it's found not just in the Himalay but across Southeast Asia as well. Snow leopard and prey take a deadly tumble off a 400 foot cliff. First time ever footage of a snow leopard making a kill. Cranes in slow motion display dance, superb imagery from wild India. In keeping with our aim of bringing to you the widest range of experiences from across India, both good and bad, beautiful and ugly, we have found yet another rare story. In a remote and forested mountainous corner of Arunachal Pradesh, in the northeast of India, villagers from the Adi tribe get together on a cold winter day each year to head out on a community hunt. They are after a small species of pipistrel or bat that lives in a cave deep in the forest. The festival is also seen as an opportunity to bring the tribe together and for them to bond and reunite. The whole village, women and children included, head out at four in the morning and walk several hours from their village carrying long bamboo poles and woven palm mats to carry out the operation. They camp in a forest clearing near the cave where the women set up fires for the impending bat roast. The men meanwhile head into the cave and block off the exit with the palm mats. The bats panic when the bamboo poles are waved at them and make for the exit to the cave. As this has already been blocked, the villagers kill them en masse with the bamboo poles against the mats. This year, over 2,700 bats were killed, tells us the village headman. Then begins the feast. And what cannot be eaten is dried and stored for future consumption. So while people in urban cities may look down upon this age-old tradition, commenting that it is perhaps inhumane or uncivilized, the people of the Adi village believe that killing the bats in hordes only once a year actually helps to maintain the natural demographic of the bat population. It has been reported that the bat population in this cave has actually increased over the years, perhaps as a complicated result of their restricted yearly culling. <laughs> 